assalamu alaikum students how are you all hope everyone is doing well so today let us begin with our uh, you know next phylum that is platyhelminthes so when i am dealing with this platyhelminthes the word platyhelminthes when i am talking you know the word platy here platy stands for flat and here helminth means nothing but a worm so all the platyhelminthes are flat worms generally you can see the picture here so the body is dorso ventrally compressed i can say yeah platyhelminth is dorso ventrally flattened okay Bl body they have hence they are called as flat worms and when i am talking about uh, the general characteristic feature before going to that mostly all the platyhelminthes are endoparasite endo inside parasite that means they live on our tissues blood okay uh, components of our body and all so mostly they are found in animals including human beings Fat, flatworms are, are the first organisms okay um yeah they have bilaterally symmetrical first organisms that show bilateral symmetrical and the body design here is tissue level but they are acelomate organisms absent of the coelomic cavity and habitat if i talk most of them i mean or they are aquatic you cannot see them on the land and all so they are aquatic most of them uh, can live even in marine and also in fresh water ecosystem but i'm talking about nutrition nutrition may be parasite feed of a uh, host like blood of the host tissues or the pre digested material from the host intestine so they feed even on dead animals too feeding uh, planarians extend you know pharynx from mouth so here these organisms uh, yeah uh, uh, some of the classification if i want to talk further they have been divided into the classes turbillaria the example for turbillaria is planarian you have a trematode that is fluke liver fluke blood fluke comes under that uh, and you have cestoda cestoda is tapeworm tinea solium tinea saginata okay that is pork found in pork may tinea solium tinea saginata in the beef and echinococcus granulosus in dog meat okay these are the different types of cestodans let us move on to the next year digestion when i'm talking about digestion digestion is extracellular food is pumped into the digestive cavity you can see the digestive cavity here oral suckers pharynx okay you can see intestine okay uterus consists of eggs ovaries there testes are also there yeah because they are hermaphrodite bisexual hermaphrodite excretory bladder is there and seminal receptacles are there so Uh, they have cavity or gut cells and digested and absorbed nutrients. Uh, digested food is then diffuses into other body tissues. Respiration and circulation occurs by diffusion of gases through the skin. Skin must remain moist for that. So they have moist skin. Excretion diffusion through the body wall. Planarians have flame cells. Yeah, these are the excretory organs in platyhelminthes. If asked in the examination for your MCQs and chooses. Uh, what are the excretory organs in planarians flame cells or even in platyhelminthes also so to excrete waste and water through this pores they have this flame cells now when you want to see the anatomy of this flat worm yeah you can see here where the ovary is placed where the testes are you can see so most of the flat worms are hermaphrodites having male and female reproductive organs in the same organisms you can see the flame cell diagram here so this is the flame cell with the excretory tubule and the pharynx i'm talking about the mouth and pharynx yeah generally you may feel that it may it should present over this area but they have this area mouth and pharynx so eye spot you can see head you can see so mouth and pharynx are not present in the head region gastrovascular cavity the long that is learning and opens into yeah is so, you know opening through the pharynx mouth and goes to the gastrovascular cavity flatworms use pharynx to suck food into the gastrovascular cavity digested food diffuses from there and all eye spots in some species detect light also 
Ganglions are present. These ganglions and nerve cord acting as the nervous system for them that sends and receives the messages. Freshwater flatworms have simple ganglia, nerve cords and all. Okay. And they run the length of the uh, worm. Complete length of the worm. So this example of this worm you can see here is fasciola hepatica I can say. So nervous system in planarian ganglions, mass of nervous tissues you can see this is the example of planaria. Eye spots you can see, brain you can see. Uh, you know, sensory lobe, intestine, you can see, mouth is here and pharynx is here, uh, quite opposite, right? So, uh, demonstrate civilization, nervous tissue is concentrated in the head region, in the head region. Sensory lobes are present to respond to touch, to chemicals, certain chemicals and all. And when I'm talking about reproduction, as I said to you, these organisms are hermaphrodite. So, asexual reproduction can also occur by fission, worm splits into two. And two uh, organisms are formed. But sexual reproduction when I am talking. Exchange of sperms. Internal fertilization only. So ovaries inside and testes are inside. So ovaries and testes releases ovum and sperms. So ovum and sperms fuses inside the body of the organism. So fertilization is internal. So but here two different worms come together. Same worm. Uh, you know you can you cannot see self uh, fertilization over there. Okay. Parasitic worms require host. To reproduce these worms requires host to reproduce unless and until they cannot reproduce so when they found uh, you know found a body like here you can see uh, schistomes life cycle i want to show you here primary host is man and intermediate host is snail here you can see the snail here first liver fluke what happens they mature and reproduces sexually in the blood vessels of human intestine they enter the intestine of human how they enter uh, you know whenever we are eat, uh, eating and all so from the uh, a snail, the larvae is released. That larvae carries with the food materials that we consume. And they enter in our intestine. There they become adult. They become adult. After becoming adult, they undergo sexual reproduction in our body. They releases the embryo, they releases, uh, you know, the larvae are formed. Again, when we pass tools or something like that, they again reaches, uh, you know, the water, the area and all. The snails, once again, what happens uh, as the water is, uh, you know, infected infect uh, the intermediate host through swimming the larvae and all snails consume that again the releases the larva again the life cycle continues so i'm just uh, talked about the schistoma but there are many other liver fluke blood fluke uh, they affect our liver they affect our blood so when i'm talking about mobility cilia are present at the corner you can see this black color you know a uh, cilia for gliding so that is the mobility, the locomotion they have. So muscle cells controlled by nervous system to react to stimuli. So they are under the control of the muscle cells uh, of the cilia are under the control of the nervous system. Why? For what? For locomotion. So this is about platyhelminthes. Yeah, when I talk like they are dividing uh, uh, tubularia, trematoda and cystoda. When I am talking about uh, tubularia, it is indirect and uh, free swimming, ciliated, Muller's larvae they produce. So, planarians produce which larvae? The larvae here is Muller's larvae. Trematoda, when I am talking, uh, trematoda, fasciola, hepatica, liver fluke, blood fluke, that is schistoma, just now I have shown you, blood fluke, they are present in our blood. It enters the snail. So, snail and humans are the uh, primary cells also in, uh, you know, we will be learning in detail about that also. So, hope you understood, uh, you know, about general characteristic features of this uh, platyhelminthes, what these are and all. So, about the life cycle of the different parasites, we'll be dealing in the next class for that. So, I'm stopping till here. Inshallah, we'll be meeting you in the next class. Have a great day, everyone. Take care, everyone.